Edward? My eyes shot to hers, and I listened, unmoving, while the vision played itself out. At first it was hard to tell exactly what she was seeing, but slowly the picture became more clear. There was a flash of red, like fire blazing its way through forks. Then the fire slowed, and I could see the face I recognized all too well. Victoria. Her villainous smile and ire-filled eyes consumed my every thought, as I forced myself not to tighten my grip on Bella's hand. Of course she would have seen Alice's expression, and knew that she was seeing something, but I couldn't let her know it was anything to worry about. My family and I could handle one enraged vampire, and I would not allow Bella to waste one more moment of her life frightened. Alice? Alice? Angela said loudly, waving her hand trying to get Alice's attention. I laughed to distract Angela, then kicked Alice sharply, reminding her we were in public. "'Is it nap time already, Alice?' I said, forcing her to lock gazes with me. Her eyes widened, and she let her posture shift back into a relaxed position. "'Sorry. I was daydreaming, I guess.' "'Daydreaming's better than facing two more hours of school,' Ben added. And almost instantly we were engaged once more in casual conversation." The difference now was that Alice, Bella, and I were all pretending. As hard as I was trying not to give Bella any reason to worry, I could hear her heart wasn't settled back into its regular rhythm, and felt how tense her body was next to mine. Alice was keeping up the façade well, but I was sure Bella noticed the intensity of her gaze when she had locked eyes with mine. "'Get Bella away from Forks for a while. We'll handle this.' I gave her the tiniest of nods while I ran my fingers through Bella's hair. I wasn't sure which one of us I was trying to comfort with this gesture. I stayed closer than usual to Bella's friends for the rest of the day, unwilling to give her the chance to ask what was wrong. I had every intention of listening to Alice's advice and getting Bella far away from Forks as possible. I just needed to think of somewhere she wouldn't refuse. Where could I offer to take her that she wouldn't instantly recognize as an excuse to get her out of town? We could go up to Alaska to check out the college that would be serving as her alibi, though that thought only made me more miserable and worried. Better yet, I could take her to see Dartmouth and try to entice her with the beautiful architecture. My mind still racing with possibilities, I eventually noticed Bella eyeing me suspiciously as we walked towards the parking lot at the end of the day. I quickly forced myself into conversation with Mike Newton to delay the inevitable a little longer. His car was only starting about half the time, and he was worried eventually he would end up stranded somewhere. "'Maybe you need a new battery,' I suggested, infusing my voice with as much sincerity as I could muster, considering who I was talking to. "'Yeah, genius, like I never checked the battery. Why is he even bothering anyway?' Mike's biting internal sarcasm didn't make it any easier to keep the smile on my face. "'Yeah, I thought of that,' he said obviously struggling as much as I was to keep the conversation polite. But I just replaced the battery. Perhaps it's the cables. Maybe. I really don't know anything about cars. I need to have someone look at it, but I can't afford to take it to Dowling's. I suddenly felt Bella's hand squeeze mine tightly, and her body stiffened. I glanced at her, but she had already seemed to calm herself down from whatever had upset her. I know a few things, I said bringing my focus back to Mike. I could take a look, if you like. Just let me drop Alice and Bella at home. Seriously? He thought, gaping at me. Don't want him at my house. Don't want to have this conversation. Uh, thanks, he stuttered, and I nearly rolled my eyes at how stubborn he was being. But I have to get to work. Maybe some other time. Like, never. Absolutely. Then I smiled wildly at him trying not to take too much pleasure in the baffled look on his face. See ya, he muttered as he got into his car. It was much easier when we both just hated each other. Does this mean I have to start being nice to Cullen? I laughed under my breath and politely listened to make sure his car started up, then went to open the passenger door for Bella. What was that about? she asked. Just being helpful. Then I glanced meaningfully back at Alice with a look that said, now it's your turn to be helpful. She immediately started babbling about everything and nothing, as Bella let out a sigh. She knew this trick. When we reached my driveway, Alice paused her chattering long enough to let me see one more flash of her earlier vision. Victoria perched outside Bella's window, 
and it was everything I could do to maintain my relaxed posture. Bella already has plane tickets, remember? All you have to do is convince her to use them. See you later, I said casually, then nodded to her understandingly. How had I forgotten about the tickets to Jacksonville? I guess I was instinctively trying to forget everything about her horrible birthday that had led to the worst mistake of my long life. Though I knew curiosity was getting to her, Bella remained silent the whole way back to her house. Every once in a while I caught her glancing at me from the corner of her eye, but I kept my gaze fixed forward, a soft smile on my face. "'Light homework load tonight,' I said as we pulled into the driveway. "'Hmm. Do you suppose I'll be allowed inside again?' I asked. Not that it ever really stopped me. Still, it was nice to know that I didn't have to hide from Charlie. "'Charlie didn't throw a fit when you picked me up for school,' she said simply, though there was an edge in her voice. I followed her upstairs, holding my breath and waiting for the question I knew was coming. I was surprised when she walked almost immediately to her computer, flicking it on as I lay down on the bed. I glanced down at her nightstand, wondering if I would find the tickets collecting dust in her drawer. Bella seemed sufficiently distracted, so I quickly opened the drawer and shuffled through a thin stack of papers, only to find them at the bottom of the pile, just as I had suspected. Tickets tucked safely away in my pocket, my mind wandered as I listened to the sound of the computer warming up. Getting her to agree to a trip to Florida didn't seem like too difficult of an undertaking. It was obvious she missed her mother. She had been talking about her in her sleep a lot lately, and I was sure a visit would do both of them a lot of good. And Bella and I being on the other side of the country would keep me sane. My thoughts were interrupted by the sound of Bella's fingers drumming nervously on her desk. I stared at her worried expression, and next instant I was beside her, locking my fingers with hers. "'Are we a little impatient today?' I asked, reveling in the warmth she was radiating. Suddenly I needed to be closer. Her heartbeat picked up slightly as I gazed into her eyes, my intent becoming clearer when I leaned in and took a deep breath of her scent. It was amazing the way all my fears seemed to disappear the moment our lips touched. Everything else vanished, and there was only us. Although I was no longer consciously thinking about the danger that was on the way, my concern for Bella's safety was still eliciting a strange response within me. Instead of pulling away like I normally would, everything in my body was telling me to bring her closer. Without thinking, my fingers were lacing into her hair, and I was pressing her face tightly to mine. I hadn't grown immune to the burn that as always rose in my throat when we were this close, but I had learned not to let the fear of it take over. I knew I was in control, and the soft hum Bella was unconsciously making was telling me that she did not want me to let go. Caught up in the moment, I was all too willing to comply, and I allowed myself to sink into her. I let my hand trace down her spine, and as I held her closer, I felt her start to shiver. With a reluctant sigh and one final deep breath of her perfection, I started to back away, but she pulled herself flush against me. I knew she always wished she was stronger, but in those instances, when I felt her desperation to stay connected with me, I felt like I was the weak one. I wanted to give her everything, no matter what my rational thoughts were telling me. When her soft, warm tongue touched my bottom lip, the wave of desire I had been trying to bury came crashing into me like a tidal wave. Her scent I had learned to handle, but when she let me taste her like that. My actions finally caught up with my hazy mind and I gently moved her face away from mine. Her breathing was ragged as we stared at each other, and I let out one soft laugh as I caught the reflection of my eyes in her own. For one brief moment we matched, two fiery-eyed people in love, seeking more than what was probably wise. Ah, oh, Bella, I breathed, wishing I could give her more. I'd say I'm sorry, but I'm not, she admitted, blushing. And I should feel sorry that you're not sorry, but I don't. Maybe I should go sit on the bed. If you think that's necessary. I smirked as I pulled myself unwillingly away from her. Necessary? Perhaps. Smart? Most definitely. Tell Renee I said hello, I said as she opened her mother's email. Sure thing, 